All right, so when it comes to red blends, are they really as good or as bad as people say? Let's find out. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about blends, specifically red blends, although there are white blends. Yes. Uh, we're gonna be talking about reds and why winemakers even make them. And uh, so I'm gonna to talk to a winemaker here <laughs> about that. So I think there's really three reasons why winemakers make red blends. Mm -hmm. I think the first would be to make a traditional red blend that has been being made for centuries. Um, and that is kind of like our Genevieve that we make here at Oak Farm. Um, this is a Bordeaux blend. Bordeaux blends have been around for many, many years. Are uh, arguably one of the first, like, yeah. purpose-built, uh, blended wines. Yeah. Yeah, and they made these red blends for a couple different reasons. I don't know if you want to explain. Yeah, I mean, just a part of it is is you're gonna have uh, a vineyard that may either have uh, one vine that's Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. and the next vine's uh, Merlot. And the next vine's Petit Bordeaux, or a lot of times, uh, in the case of what the way we have it is, is we'll have rows of uh, one type of grape, and then you'll have more rows of another type of grape, and then that adds an insurance policy. Some might get yeah. ripe some years, and then some might be more susceptible to rain damage if it rains or hails or all that kind of stuff. And then another grape might be stronger in that area, and so it's just kind of a a way to sort of balance things out and hedge your bet, yeah. you know. Like but, and then also sometimes it just makes your wine taste yeah. better too. So. Yummy. So like that. in in Bordeaux, it sometimes cab doesn't ripen all the way, so mm -hmm. it's like let's add a little bit of Merlot to help that cab out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why, and that's why we make a Bordeaux blend is we have all the varieties, and mm -hmm. it's a blend that consumers recognize and know. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to plant them as a way of sort of a traditional uh, yeah. uh, way, and I just happen to like the way that. Bordeaux uh, wines taste, yeah. but having said that, also it is nice to have all these different components and make a more complex wine. Yeah. And then I would say the second reason is to kind of enhance or boost a variety. Maybe, you know, it didn't grow that well in the vineyard. It's a little thinner than we thought. Um, we picked it a little too early. Yeah. You can take a different variety and help it out a little bit. Absolutely. Add some petite sirah for structure or add some Barbera for brightness and acidity. Yeah, and the third reason would be it's what we call kind of a kitchen sink wine, where you just kind of throw everything in it, and it's which uh, most wine, and we don't do that at Oak Farm, um, and I think most people don't, but there are definitely people that you know they have three hundred gallons of cab left over yeah. and six hundred gallons of zin. It's got to go someplace. You're not going to dump it down the drain. Oh no! Um, I know that. Some people have a tendency to think that red blends can be kind of a, an inferior quality and mm -hmm. uh, single varietals are superior. I don't think that's the case at all. Yeah, I don't either. I think that you take three different, so let's take our Tivoli blend, for example. Mm -hmm. It's three different varieties. It's Zinfandel primarily, mm -hmm. and then Barbera and Petit Syrah. Yeah. It's taking the best traits and the best qualities from these three grapes yes. and blending them together. That's to, the idea, at least. I yeah, mean, I think so. To increase quality, to increase complexity, to yep. increase the balance of yep. the wine. Um, and so you're taking most, most blends are, they have a base wine to them. Mm -hmm. So this one is Zinfandel based, but, it, but Zin can be a little bit lighter, especially if it's picked early. And also doesn't have too much structure. Right. So it's, it, meaning it doesn't have a lot of tannin. Um, it's not very necessarily acidic usually, yeah. you know, especially as the more it's, ripe it gets. It's earthy it and it can be a little fruity. Yeah. But it's it's definitely, we don't want to over oak ours and add tannin through oak. So right. we needed to add something to kind of boost the mouthfeel. For sure. And we add a little bit of petite Syrah. Yep. Um, but we will do bench trials in the lab and come up with the best percent of Petit Syrah to add to give this wine the best quality. One thing that's also worth mentioning is, is that even if it says it's a single grape on the, on the bottle, a single varietal, where it says it's Cabernet Sauvignon or it says it's Zinfandel, that means it only has 75% 
or more of that grape in Which there. Which is crazy. Too. Yeah, so you can have up to 25% of another grape in there. And uh, still say it's yeah, Cabernet Sauvignon. According to California uh, yeah. wine. So that's just something to be aware of, too. So when somebody says, oh, I don't like wines, I only like that. And it's like, well, you might be drinking yeah. somewhat of a blend, but you don't even realize it. Yeah. So this just happens to be that this has um, more than 25% of another grape other than Zinfandel. So therefore, we wouldn't be able to call that Zinfandel even if we wanted to. Yeah. And then the other thing with this, Dan was saying, you know, sometimes Zinfandel lacks acidity. Mm -hmm. And so we have Barbera. It grows amazing in Lodi. Yeah. Um, and it's one of our favorite wines, mm -hmm. just a single variety Barbera. We add about 8% of Barbera to this blend, and it helps bring a little bit more brighter fruits yep. and higher acidity. And so blending these three grape varieties together helps the bouquet and the flavors of this wine. And so I think... Makes it a better wine. Yeah. And I think the perception needs to be changed about red blends because as a winemaker, it's actually harder to make a red blend than yep. it is a single variety. Sure. A red blend takes days of doing bench trials and thought and, you know, moving wines from one program to another. It's not, let's pick this vineyard, put it in barrel, and then bottle it. So when I'm at a wine shop or a grocery store, I always look at the back of blend. of bottles and of blends. And usually if they don't have the varieties and the percentage, I stray away from them mm -hmm. because I'm not sure what's in that bottle. Yeah, unless um, it already has like this long standing reputation. Yeah. You know? So why do some winemakers and some wineries not put the variety and the percentage on the bottle? Yeah, I think part of it comes down to they don't want to have people uh, like questioning why they only put X amount of this grape in this year and then Y amount of that grape next year and all that kind of stuff. I, that's my guess. Yeah. Uh, we put it on there uh, because I just think it's kind of fun and easy way to tell yeah. people. And it's like the number one question I get asked when we're trying to sell our wine to a restaurant or a yeah. wine shop is, okay, well, what, what, what's in it? Yeah, yeah, what's what's in this wine? And so it's just yeah. easier just to flip the label around and show them. And then yeah. that way they don't have to try to remember it or write it down or pull out a technical yeah. sheet and, or whatever. And um, if you take our Raphael, for example, it's primarily Sangiovese, mm -hmm. but actually this is 2017 and mm -hmm. it only has about 50% Sangio. Right. But we just made the blend yesterday of the 18 mm -hmm. and we actually bumped it up to 70%. Yeah. And so I think, there's an, yeah. so putting it on the label, some people are going to question us and be like, why was it 40 last year? But we go off of, yeah. you know, amounts that we have in the cellar and also flavor components and, Every vineyard, Ultimately, what we think is going to make the better yeah. wine. Every vineyard changes every year uh, due absolutely. to weather, soil. A variety of things, yeah. Vari yeah so it could, everything. could be you thinned it too much in the vineyard, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and we'll keep doing them. All right? Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye.